Hello, everyone. I am Sam Ekman of Gold Derby. I am so excited to be here with Sophia Lillis, star of the movie Uncle Frank. And Sophia, in this movie, you have such great chemistry with Paul Bettany. You play Beth. He is, of course, the titular Uncle Frank. Um, and it's really a joy to watch the two of you together and bouncing off one another, which is the bulk of this film. Um, was that chemistry there right at the start when you first started working together? I think so. I think actually kind of our relationship was sort of similar to, uh, you know, Beth and Uncle Frank because she, you know, I was there. This was kind of, uh, you know, so many, such a great cast and having like to work side by side with Paul Bettany. I kind of felt, you know, oh, I have to, you know, pick it up. You know, I have to do great. And I it was a little bit, I looked up to him in a way and I try to think of it as like in a learning experience where uh, uh, when I'm working with him, I'll just watch him, see what he does and kind of work off him in that way. Um, and Beth, if you watch the film, looks up to Uncle Frank and sees him as a, a mentor figure and does whatever she can to be someone like him in a way. Uh, where how he achieved his goals and got to be in New York and be a professor. She likes the same things as him and wants to, you know, be able to one day, I don't know about teaching, but maybe one day, you know, do something um, on her by herself, on her own, become like this strong, independent person. Um, so yeah, I guess in a way I try to use that um, into my acting. <laughs> no, it's a great real life uh, thing to have there. Um, yeah. the, the interesting thing about that mentorship that he has to Beth is, you know, as the film goes on at the end, she really is able to grow up and flip the script in a way and almost has to use her skills to mentor him in what she's learned. What was it like playing the dynamic of that change? Um, well, uh, when did we, sh that specific scene I'm thinking of when she's uh, yelling him um, yeah. in the graveyard um I think that was one of the later scenes we've done and I was able to kind of understand the character and go through the character so being able to do that scene I kind of it was kind of like I she was growing up that's the whole uh, throughout the story she's becoming her own person you know she's she's gaining up the confidence and realizing there's more out there and she develops she's changed her <laughs> character personality and um I kind of try to grow up alongside her, you know, try to understand the transition. Um, and so when I was there and I was <laughs> yelling at Paul, um, <laughs> um, I, I really, in a way, I kind of like, I, I loved that part of Beth and I actually was rooting for her while I was doing it subconsciously, just thinking, yeah, this is your moment. It's, this is you're doing it is great and also at the same time I'm yelling at Paul which felt kind of mean but <laughs> you know um yeah that was a good but, scene um, on. one of my favorite lines that you have I think in that growing up process is when you're yelling at I think it's in the scene you're yelling at him and you you say um you know that conversation changed my life the conversation that in the moment he's kind of forgetting but to her was so impactful and she kind of learns that adults or mentors make mistakes too. Do you think that was a huge part of her transition and growing up? Absolutely. I think the one thing that really made her change was uh, not only, you know, going on this ride and going to New York and kind of um, learning, you know, by growing up, but also seeing, hanging out and being with her uncle and kind of as being more like when she's close to him and getting closer, she sees him at, in a different light she sees him how he really is like the real side to to him instead of this glorified version that she had as a kid and in a way she looked up to him more because of it and also it's it made her see her family uh differently going back home and before she constantly felt like no one understands me and I'm you know my own person and only Uncle Frank understands me and but then when she gets back home, she kind of realizes, I don't, I'm, I didn't understand my family. Um, there's so much, so many more sides to them than just this one part of them that I saw as a kid. 
And that that family that you come home to when it's so different, there is so many um, really great established actors in this movie. And you've had um, a string of projects with a lot of established actors in them. Do you feel like you're sort of collecting acting mentors along the way in your career so far and taking little bits from them? It does feel like that. I, I try to uh, look at all of my um, projects, like all the projects I get to work on in that way. Um, it actually kind of helps me because I, you know, always get nervous beforehand thinking, you know, kind of in my head of I need to get this right and stuff like that. And I think the, it's a way I think about it uh, in order to not do that is to think of it as uh, an experience, something that I will take with me onto my next project. So, um, yeah, it does feel kind of like I'm hopping from <laughs> hopping from class to class, uh, you know, kind of um, learning, you know, kind of being going abroad <laughs> and learning <laughs> acting, um, except as a profession. Yeah. So. And you mentioned before, too, that a big chunk of this movie is kind of like styled like a road trip movie um, with you and Paul Bettany uh, and Peter as well. Um, what was it like spending so much time filming in the car? Oh, I, well, I love the car because it was, you know, the cars are, you know, great to look at because, um, you know, it was a period piece and getting to look at these like these vintage vehicles is fun. Mm -hmm. uh, being inside it, not so much because <laughs> it's hot, it's in the summer, it's in the south and it's, um, well, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's so no air conditioning, um, but they did whatever they can, uh, the, the crew and giving us little, um, hidden, you know, uh, fans and trying our best to <laughs> keep us cool. Uh, but no, it was fun hanging out with the, being with, uh, you know, Paul and Peter. Uh, it would, does, did kind of feel like we're, you know, every single day we were going on a little, little road trip, mm -hmm. a, little, a little acting road trip, uh, which was just which was fun, uh, despite the heat. Yeah. And the film is written and directed uh, by Alan Ball, um, so obviously very uh, close to him. What was his, what kind of guidance did he give you and insight uh, did he give you for the character? Uh, the character, um, actually one of the things that made him, that makes him such a great director is that he, he's also, he's acted before, you know, he's also, he knows about actors. So he actually lets, the actors do their interpretation, do what they want, and really, really gives any acting tips while uh, directing. He actually, you know, mostly does um, uh, his, you know, his, the way he meant, what, what, what I think about directing, the way, his, the way he directs is mostly just, uh, um, this is what's happening, uh, maybe move this way, maybe the camera should go over here and we can do this shot but he rarely ever gives acting advice, which I think is great because it allows the actor to do what they want with the character. Um, another thing that he actually taught me, um, which just his style in general was he was, he's very, he knows what he wants. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's, cause I think because he's so experienced with doing that, he, <laughs> that with directing, um, where he, he sees what he wants. He only does like, three to four takes if he feel if he feels that's right and then once he's got what he wants he moves on he doesn't like try new things or maybe let's do something slightly different and maybe I'll see something else he he's very quick and I think that was uh was actually kind of helped me a bit because I get in my head um and I always think oh I can do this differently I can do this better and usually actually it gets worse if you keep with that mentality but to you know trust the director that he got what he wants and we can move on actually helped me a bit to kind of get out of my head and accept it. Yeah. And uh, I think it worked. Yeah, definitely. And, and one of the unique things about your character too is she's really, she's the narrator of the film and she's sort of the eyes for the audience um, and spends a lot of time observing in, in that regard. Uh, I would call her an observer, I think. Is there a kind of specific, unique challenge to that type of role and performance? It is a bit. It's because you're not the narrator. They're not really the main character, even though it's like they may be in it a lot. But mostly they're allowing the other actors 
to partic uh, allowing other actors to tell their story. They're just there to show one side of it. And I feel like it's, it's, it's almost like a different style of acting, which um, I kind of did before um, on a, I'm not okay with this, which is a, a, a show that mm -hmm. I did. I also kind of narrated, but it was mostly very, um, a lot of, you know, verbal, you know, you can hear me uh, narrate everything going on, but this was a little bit different because I, I don't do that here. I, even though a little bit here and there, but mostly it was just her observing Uncle Frank. Um, and it was a little difficult in a way um, to kind of uh, be able to, you know, tell a story without actually, you know, telling the story. You know, that's, that's such a bad way of interpreting it, but I hopefully, you, you do you understand? I do Am understand. I, right? Oh, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm also still, that since you brought it up, I'm still very, very bummed that we're not getting another season of I'm Not Okay With This. It was um, amazing job in there. And it has to be, I would think, you know, a, a huge bummer for you since the story kind of ends with here we go for part two. Is that a hard thing to swallow when, when something doesn't get picked up? It is because I, you know, that's such a, <laughs> the worst way to end it is to, like to have this humongous cliffhanger and then you can't do anything about it. You know, I don't know what happens. <laughs> so <laughs> I want to know what happens. Are your fan petitions now folks? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, the, this film, uh, Uncle Frank is also set in a, it's a period piece that's set in the 70s, which you're not a stranger to diving into the past. Um, like with it, it was in the 80s. Uh, did you find that you needed to do a lot of research to understand some things of the time period? Um, I didn't have to, one good thing, I didn't have to do much because um, even though I was never alive during the 70s, a lot of the other people working on this were definitely alive during the 70s. And so they told me everything they could and I saw pictures and I got to be in the character, you know, I got to be in the clothes and I got to be, you know, um, every, you know, the whole location and everything, set people, you know, had all of this, everything set up to look like it was in the 70s. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like stepping in to a different time period. So in that way, it wasn't that, you know, wasn't that hard to do, you know, it wasn't to kind of get into that period. Yeah. And I, I wondered too, because like at the time, you know, such a centerpiece of the film is Frank's, um, you know, inability to come out to his family. And Beth is very, she's shocked at first, I think, but is sort of unbothered with the news of his sexuality, even though that's something foreign to her and she doesn't have experience with it. Why do you think that is? Why does she react that way? I think it's because two things. I one I think is because she's a bit educated and she, you know, she's spent most of her time um, trying to learn about everything outside of her, you know, small home. You know, she she used her, you know, a, a, during her childhood to educate herself to learn about, you know what's out there. Also, I think because she also really looks up to, she's always looked up to Uncle Frank that I don't think really anything would really, um, you know, try, you know, would diminish that. Yeah. So I think it was because of those things that she didn't, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm like blanking now because <laughs> of that. Okay. Um, anyways. Um, you know, the, one thing I noticed about several of the characters you play, like across It and I'm Not Okay With This and now Uncle Frank is you have um, these people who for one reason or another feel like they're outsiders. Uh, is that something that you specifically feel drawn to in roles? Uh, yeah, I feel like they're, uh, I think the outsiders, I think they're the most interesting, I guess. Um, to you know, be excluded for the way they think or the, uh, the way they act. Um, it's just more fun to play, you know, because I get to be their own person. And I think in, in that, I kind of understand that, you know, I've, I've never personally, I've never been able to, despite it being my job, I was never able to become someone else. You know, I was never able to change myself for, you know, uh, so I can like 
be with other people, you know, socially, um, thinking about middle school and whatnot. Uh, I was never, <laughs> going back to then, um, I was never really able to do that, you know? Um, and so I understand, you know, kind of being your own person um, and how it's, you know, it's, it's hard to, and I think it's so much fun to play these characters who have their own, these own quirky, unique personalities and um, are outsiders uh, that are, but are actually just a really interesting, cool people that just aren't really accepted because of it. And I think that's just great to play. Yeah. Um, well, before I let you go, I just wanted to know, uh, you've amassed quite a collection of characters already at a, at a fairly young age in your career. Um, is there something else that you're dying to play or a type of role or a type of project that you're really eager to get to do next? Hmm. Um, <laughs> I think after quarantine, I was just, I feel like I just grasping at anything. Um, that was a joke. <laughs> Um, <laughs> aren't we all I, I know <laughs> um, oh I, I love I, this is one thing I, I, I like to bring up uh, I've always wanted to play a, a villain because I don't think I've yet to play one and I feel like that would be really fun um, other than that I'm not sure <laughs> well I think villain is a, is a great place to start I think we'll, we'll all anticipate your, your villainous role sometime in the future uh, <laughs> Sophia, thank you so much for, for joining me. Everyone who's out there watching, make sure you subscribe to Gold Derby. Keep up to date with us throughout the season. And thank you once again, Sophia.